Okay, right, this is a, this is a very, very quick if I could, uh, presentation of the research uh, done by myself and Noel Whelan, where we tried to work out what the result of the last two general elections would have been if different electoral systems had been put into place. Uh, all of this is based on, I'll talk about the process now, all of this is based on basically recreating the last two elections but on the basis of running them under different types of electoral rules. Uh, so the basic process was, first of all, to run the election under first-past-the-post electoral rules and AV alternative voting rules, and also the list, or MMP, multi-mixed-member proportional rules, we had to create new constituency units. Uh, so Part of the process involved the creation of nominal constituency units. In the case of the first past the post and the alternative vote systems, 166 of these, and in the case of the MMP system, half that number, 83. Uh, the basic principles I used to set up these units were the same as the principles used by the Constituency Commission and indeed the Electoral Area Committees for drawing up uh, election boundaries in Irish elections. So the rules about proportionality, the rules about trying not to breach county boundaries wherever practicable, I use those. I was on the Dublin and Cities Committee for the last set of local election boundary drafts, so I, I know all the ins and outs of this. Uh, having drawn up the nominal constituency units, so the, the usual rule of thumb I used for this uh, was if it was a five-seat constituency, under PRSTV, under the regular uh, constituency system, regular electoral system, I divided up that constituency into five nominal first past the post constituencies. So that, that was the basic. And these constituencies had to make geographical sense. So I had to make sure, first of all, I wasn't uh, taking bits of, of constituencies and joining them together. So the constituencies had to be contiguous, they had to make geographical sense. I also threw in other rules, so to try and match up with local election constituencies as far as was practicable, and also to try and avoid the breaching of towns, trying to avoid, trying to avoid drawing the election boundary lines through towns, which didn't happen in 2007 in the last one, but that's beside the point. Uh, that was impractical with some towns, but that's beside the point. Having devised the constituency units then, uh, thanks to the availability of tally figures, this wouldn't have been possible for 2002 thanks to electronic voting, but thanks to the availability of a full set of tally figures which uh, Fianna Fáil headquarters made available, I was then able to calculate what the votes were for the different parties and also different political groupings in all of these created nominal constituency units. So the 166 units for the first past the post and alternative vote, and then the 83 constituency units for the mixed member proportional system. And on the basis of that then, worked out which party or in some cases which political grouping would have won those seats. And after doing that, once we'd worked out the entire seat numbers for all of these, there was time for comparison and commentary. Now, I'm a geographer and I would argue that geography has a big role to play when it comes to Irish voting patterns. If you look at voting patterns in Irish elections, there's a very strong geographical basis to it. This applies in terms of the, of the voting patterns for individual candidates, but also applies in terms of the voting patterns for political parties, because in an election, a political party's voting pattern is effectively the sum of voting patterns for maybe two or three candidates, if they're running two or three candidates. Uh, why was this important? Well, I, I had to take account of this when I was drawing up the nominal election boundaries because, because of this, you had to be very careful that you're as objective as possible when you're devising the rules and drawing up the boundaries because you draw a boundary two miles to the east or to the west and that would probably this, that would mean the seat might fall to a different party or a different person. Also because one of the points that's made later on about the role of independence uh, the general expectation might be an independent would suffer under first past the post because we probably all have heard that small parties would suffer under that. The fact is, as the map from is Timothy Broderick in Galway East in the last election, uh, Senator Higgins will know this very well, 
uh, you'll see his vote there is very concentrated in a small area. So independence in the first past the post electoral system would do probably as well as the would, maybe not exactly, but close to as well as the would in PRS TV, so long as the boundary lines were drawn around their strong areas. Uh, these are the results uh, that came from this. Uh, so you see the different columns there. Uh, the first column is the actual results under PRCV. The next column, the results on, on the first past the post, the big striking factor there, the huge number of seats that would have been allocated to Fianna Fáil. This is 2007. The model predicts they would have won 142 seats. So effectively, 85% uh, of the seats would have gone to Fianna Fáil, 18 to Fianna Gael, and the other six being divided out between the smaller parties. The alternative vote would blunt that somewhat because Fine Gael and Labour would have picked up a few extra seats because of vote transfers, mainly between each other. And the Greens would have also won two seats in Lucan and Balbriggan because of vote transfers as well. Mixed member proportional then, the last column, uh, there was decisions to be made here. The big decision was what to do about independence in terms of this system. I made the decision because independents are not a coherent enough group I said I couldn't really treat them as a separate or single political grouping for this, so I excluded them. But if you read the report, I calculated numbers, what the seat numbers would have been if the independents were included. So the numbers there, interestingly enough, they're not that different from the PRSTV seat allocations for the three main parties. The party that does jump up in this one is Sinn Féin. Uh, 2011, so I, we did two elections. Uh, as a good thing to do because you can compare between two different elections. Some ways it's a bad thing because the results of 2011 were so dramatically different to 2007. But you can see Fianna Fáil, first past the post, the dramatic change in numbers. So if first past the post had been brought in and if people had voted, this is the important point, if people had voted exactly the same in those two elections, if first past the post had been brought in, Fianna Fáil would have been on 142 in 2007, down to 3 in 2011. Bang. Ouch. <laughs> Fine Gael would have been... Fine Gael would have won 114 seats in both uh, electoral systems. And that's important to note. They would not have needed to go into coalition with Labour. They would have had a very strong majority. Labour seat numbers, interestingly enough, for all the different electoral systems, more or less the same, slightly lower for AV, slightly lower for first past the post, uh, Sinn Féin doing, winning fewer seat numbers in first past the post in AV, but higher in the list system. The Greens, unfortunately for them, out of it in all of them. United Left Alliance, and there's a slight mistake if you look at the summary chapter, they're down as four seats there, it should be five. Someone forgot that Seamus Healy was also a ULA candidate in that election. United Left Alliance would have won five, won five seats. They'd have only picked up one seat in the first past the post and AV, and that would have actually been Seamus Healy. Uh, the interesting thing, as I said, independents, slightly down in the number of seats that would have won in, a, in, P, the won in PRSTV, but the number of seats that would have won in the first past the post electoral system, not that different, only slightly down. And that's, why is that? Well, an independent candidate, as we saw with the Broderick map, they tend to win most of their votes in and around their home area or home base. So independent candidates, if they're strong enough, would be very much in contention to win seats in first past the post or the alternative of vote. The parties that suffer are the smaller political parties, and particularly the smaller political parties whose vote base is very geographically diffuse. Uh, the Green Party would be a classic example of that. So I know we're under time pressure here, so just a few quick points. It's, a lot of these points are in the report itself. So this looks at what the impacts would have been in terms of party representation. Uh, the knock-on effects in terms of government formation. So you see, if you look at, say, 2011, some of the electoral system scenarios has Fine, Fine Gael with enough seats to form a majority on their own. Others have Fine Gael with not enough seats, needing support from other groupings. And the same, even 2007 Fianna Fáil, Fianna Fáil would have needed support to form a government in PRSTV, MMP, but not in the other systems. Uh, I've also looked at other aspects. I don't have time to go into them here today, but what would have been the impacts on the levels of political engagement because of knock-on effects in terms of constituency competition, constituency marginality, and the knock-on effect for voter turnout. Uh, 
Other points about the turnover of candidates. Uh, one knock-on effect I found by comparing the likely candidates to be elected in both electoral studies on the first past the post, I found that effectively only 15% of candidates would have survived between 2007 and 2011 if first past the post had been brought in. And there's some other, other interesting points in terms of the representation of females. Uh, I was guesstimating based on my working out that first and past the post would have been more or less the same as PRSTV in terms of permitting uh, increasing or maintaining the number of female uh, representatives in Dáil Éireann. Uh, just pointing to some interesting work just to get a better handle of this, uh, obviously a lot of the other experts here know more about this than me. Uh, if you want to look at other geographical work from the UK, uh, looking at the mechanics of what causes proportionality or disproportionality, there's good work at the moment from Charles Patty and Ron Johnson. Now, there's a number of very important health warnings. As I said, this study is based on the premise that people would have voted exactly the same. Uh, if you use a different electoral system, people won't vote exactly the same. So people would vote exactly differently. So, these numbers here, uh, in reality, Fianna Fáil probably wouldn't have won 142 seats in 2007 under first past the post because people would have voted differently. Uh, Labour leaning voters in a constituency that was up, that was being contested between Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael would have probably voted tactically for Fine Gael to try and, uh, in keeping with the Mullingar Accord and so on. So maybe you wouldn't see Fianna Fáil winning 142 seats, but it still would have won a comfortable enough majority. And there's other health warnings, but I won't go into them here because of time. Thank you.